Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation, homebrew news, and much, much more. Okay, so we get a brand new version of Gold Hen today. Well, it's going to be in beta. So it has been since December the 25th, 2022, since we had a Gold Hen version, and that was version 2.3. So with the new version that just dropped a couple of hours ago, I wanted to go ahead and cover that in this video. So right off the bat, we're going to look at what is new in this beta version. So it says that it added FTP support for server 2.1. Also, there was added in multi-cheat support, also added in multi-firmware support. So now it looks like we're going to have a single bin versus multiple bins and then added package installer source settings. And they also had a couple of images in here, one of them being showing the multi-cheat support, which we're gonna cover in detail in just a moment. And then the other one here is, is this new debug settings for the package source, which we're also going to look at in depth. And now if you want to download this, obviously you can come in here and you can even pay zero and press get now and then you'll have the ability to download it. Once it is downloaded right here, you will see that there is now just one single bin file for those three different versions of the PS4 firmware, which was 5.05, 6.72, and 9.00. There's also some of the readme information as well as a change log, but we're going to dive into that once we switch over to the PlayStation 4. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so already have Gold Hen running. This is obviously version 2.3, and we can see there was all kinds of amazing things that was added in 2.3. So like added in plugin support. So now we were able to do things like unlock a frames per second of like 60 plus in some games, along with all kinds of other patches or plugins for games. There was also an FPS counter, so you would be able to see at the bottom left hand side of your screen what is the frames per second that you're currently getting title id label feature so you know which version of the game that you're currently running so for europe games or for the united states also you can add in the specific version number there was mc4 cheat support scan lines which kind of gave you this retro kind of look and feel and then there was added internal pkg installation support where basically you can install a pkg to a slash data slash pkg folder and then it would automatically or you could automatically install those packages instead of maybe putting them just at the root of a usb drive which is what a lot of us had done in the past so that is pretty much what came out of gold hen 2.3 so with that being said I think now we'll go ahead and we'll load up the new version of Gold Hen. So I'm going to go ahead and just switch over to one of my ESP32 devices that I have loaded Gold Hen 2.4 Beta 5 on. Now, probably by the time that you watch this, all of the normal host will go ahead and have been updated. So I'm going to go ahead and run that payload. And there we go, Gold Hen version 2.4 B5 has been loaded. So it's obviously going to go ahead and use that existing config file that I have and turn on the bin loader. So now let's go ahead and let's jump straight over into Gold Hen and let's go to about, first off, it says that there is FTP server version 2.1. So this is all thanks to Hippie86. It says connect to port 2121 and you have some additional features. So now you can do things such as decrypt. So it toggles server-side decryption of cell files. So this is enabled by default. There is another one called MTProc, which mounts the proc file system. And then there is another one that is MTRW, which mounts read-only system partition with read and write access. So if we go ahead and we scroll down into this just a little bit, we can see the change log here says that with version 2.4, they're going to be adding in this FTP server version 2.1, also adding in multi-cheat support. So with multi-cheat support, so for example, if developer A built a cheat file for Resident Evil 4 and developer B 
also created a cheat file for Resident Evil 4, well, then you would be able to play the game and use cheats from either one of those developers. There is also added in multi-firmware support. And really what this is, is, is that in the past with Gold Hen, they have released separate .bin files that you would download for whatever version that you're currently using. Now we really just have one .bin file. And with that one .bin file, well, it now would be able to be ran on a 5.05, a 6.72, or a 9.00 system. And then the very last setting here, it says it added package installer source settings. Now I did reach out to Chameleon on Twitter and he responded with the following. So I asked the question, can you elaborate on this feature? And he said, yes, Gold Hen can install PKG files from the following pass, slash data, slash PKG, which is an internal path, or mount USB 0 or 1, which is an external path. So this option pretty much will let you choose from which path you need to install a PKG. And he does say that a more complete PKG handler is on the roadmap. And now I'm going to go all the way up to debug settings here. And right there is that brand new feature. So it says package source. So right now the package source is set to the USB, but you could change this to hard disk drive, or finally you could put this on all. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set mine to all because any of those folders would be absolutely relevant for me to install my PKG files. Okay, and so in order to test this functionality, I've done a couple of things. The very first thing that I did was I installed this PKG right here that is highlighted to my USB zero, and I just put it in the root directory. Now, if we go up here and we go to our data folder, and then we go over to PKG, then you'll see that I've already got two PKGs already in this folder. So now when we use this new version of Gold Hen, it will automatically see these two PKGs as well as the one that we have on our USB drive. So let's go ahead and we'll give that a shot. We'll go over to Gold Hen and then Debug Settings. And right here, since our package source is set to all, if we go to Package Installer, then right there are all three of those packages. So that is definitely an added feature that I think we will all enjoy. And then kind of going back over to the FTP, you will notice over inside of server settings, when you go to enable the FTP server, it now has more of that information such as auto decrypt enabled and MTRW to enable read write on these system partitions. So again, if you put a check into that, well, obviously you can use things such as FileZilla to connect to your PlayStation 4 for FTP, but you could also come back over here and go into the about, and now you could actually send these commands such as decrypt, MTPROC and then MTRW. So let's go ahead and let's see what this looks like. Okay, so back over in Windows, I'm using FileZilla here. And as you can see, I've went ahead and I've connected to my PlayStation 4. Now for you, if you're just now doing this for the first time, you just simply need to add in a host here, which is the IP address to your PlayStation 4. You can leave username and password blank, but then for the port, you would want to type in 2121 and then press connect. And you should see something just like this right here. Now, in order to run those custom commands, what we have to do is we have to go up to server and then we're going to go to enter custom command and it'll pop up this prompt right here. We're going to type in MTP ROC and now we're going to press OK here. And you will see right here, it does show that this command was accepted in as OK. Now let's also come back up here and we're going to go to server and we're going to go enter custom command and we're going to type MTRW, which gives us the read write permissions and then press 
OK right here. And now you should see a 200 command OK. OK, and so now that we've sent those two commands, if we come over here to the mount folder right here, we can see that there is now this PROC folder, and now we have access to the contents of it. Now inside of the mount folder, it looks like there is a couple of different things that you would have access to. So there is the proc, there is the RNPS, and then there is the sandbox here. So right here is also that PFS MNT. So I'm not 100% sure about what all files and folders that this unlocks, but I'll do a bit more research on it. Well, anyway, I hope this video will help someone out there. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you find the content useful. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.